Hey, hey, fellow YouTubers, JJ the Trucker coming to you from Erie, Pennsylvania at the TA. And this is another You Asked, I Delivered. And it's another part of the Truck Stop series. So, in the Truck Stop series, I did show what it was like to fuel a semi, and, uh, but it was a Freightliner. And so now I've been asked, what is it like to fuel a Peterbilt? And you're probably thinking, same exact thing, right? It's close, but not exactly. The Peterbilt setup is a lot different than the Freightliner Cascadia. So I'm gonna go ahead and show you on a Peterbilt 579 how you fuel this thing, and I'm gonna give you two different views. I'm gonna try it one-handed, you know, which is gonna be a little challenging because it is more challenging to fuel in the Peterbilt than it is in the Freightliner. Uh, so I'm gonna do it here, and then I'm gonna show you also at the Pittston Yard uh, I'm gonna have somebody else do the feeling for me while I tape them. That way you get to see two different perspectives on how to do it, uh, but it, it's really important to see what it's like in the actual fuel islands because these fuel islands, they're set up really weird and they're not they're not convenient when it comes to fueling up the, uh, the Peterbilt. And I'm gonna show you exactly what I'm talking about. Stay tuned. All right, I've already got the information entered into the pump. It is ready to go. <clears throat> now, the tanks, Unlike in the Cascadia, got the DEF tank normally in the Cascadia, you've got your tank right here. It's nice and easy. But the tanks and the Peterbilt 579 are back here. So you gotta come on in here, reach back. You got the step box in the way, which is optional, but you got the fairings in the way and everything. You gotta reach back, flip this up, twist it, and it comes right up. There we go. Now, turn back around. Grab this. Dang. Pop it right into there. And there we go. Alright, we're at zero. And there we go. Squeeze and lock. Just like you do on your car. It's filling up. But we got it. See, now you're on the wrong side of the hose. And you gotta be careful, because if you knock it out too much, it can knock this out and it'll start spraying everywhere. If you hit the bump that, it shuts everything down and thinks that you need to fill your DEF next. So you have to start all over. So you have to be careful. Now, here's the other thing. You probably can't tell the perspective, but you can see where the hose comes out. It's not a very long hose. You can see where we're at right here. And the hose is on that side of the uh, the fuel island, okay? Now you come around here, you would think that it would be the same way. <clears throat> but it's not. First of all, the fuel island isn't even even with the other fuel island. Here's the end of this fuel island, <laughs> and there's the other fuel island. So that fuel island is offset that way more, and this one is towards the front of the truck, and look where the hose is. It's on that side. So that's just not very convenient. So you've got to really stretch this hose here. So let's go ahead and do that. Which means you really have to park it in the perfect spot in order to do this. If you pull too far forward, that hose isn't going to reach. If you don't pull far enough, this hose isn't going to reach all the way around the fairing back here to sit in here. Go. <clears throat> ah, I'm gonna reach the hand back in there. Squeeze it, lock it, and let it go. <clears throat> All right. Now, on normal days, this is the opportunity you take to clean your windshield, but it's been raining for the last uh, two days, so don't need to do that. So. Hey, Mr. Pumpkins, how you doing? Yeah, enjoying the rain? You getting a free bath? <laughs> I don't blame you. All right. So, let's talk about something else different here. Freightliner versus uh, Cascadia, or <laughs> Freightliner versus Peterbilt. The DEF. The DEF nozzle is up here just like in the, uh, the Freightliner. But the Freightliner fits a lot more DEF than the, uh, than the Peterbilt and uses less. So what that means is on the Freightliner, 
every time I fill this up, I can go four tanks or four fill-ups of fuel before I need to refill that DEF, which is convenient. On this 579 Peterbilt, not so much. It uses up about three quarters of a tank of DEF for every fill up here. Maybe a little bit less than three quarters, but definitely more than half, which means every time I stop to fuel up, I have to deal with the DEF. And DEF is a pain in the butt. Now check this out. You see where this is? See where the DEF nozzle is? Way back here. Again, I had to pull forward in order to get that pump <laughs> to, to line up. Now, we're gonna have to see if this reaches. If not, I'm gonna have to get back in the truck, start it up, and back up. Ah, already a pain in the butt, okay? So, let's see, this one uh, I heard click off, so let's go ahead and uh, pull that out a little bit more and start topping it off there. Okay. Definitely easier to do with two hands. Let's see if I can get you a better view right there. And turn the other side clicking off. Now you can top these off pretty good, but you don't want to overfill them. That's something I did in my last video. I really topped them off a lot and got a lot of comments about not wanting to overfill them. Uh, and it actually says that if you can read all that right there, uh, somewhere in there, that do not fill no more than 95% capacity. Not really sure exactly how much 95% is, but I'm guessing it's probably right about there. So that's about where I fill it to. Okay, now, I cannot hang this one up yet, or else that one will stop working. So I gotta put this back in here, come back around. Dodge the hose. Get my hand squeezed back into here again. I really don't like the tanks being back here. I really don't. Now, don't think that that means I want to go back to a Freightliner and that I don't like the Peterbilt. Because I love this Peterbilt. I really do love this Peterbilt. It's got a couple of things that, you know, might be pet peeves like this. But uh, you can go back to my Freightliner pet peeves video. I have plenty of pet peeves there too. I think we are about there. Maybe a little bit more. And there we go. I'll go ahead and put it there. Alright. That's about how much I got. Now I can hang this up. Let's not forget to put the cap back on. I did that on my last video. I forgot to put the cap on the reefer. <laughs> I forgot to show putting it back on the reefer. After I finished filming, I was like, oh, wait a minute. I forgot something. And I went back and did it before I took off. But I, I got a few comments about that, too. All right, now I can go ahead and hang this one up. Now, hang, when I hang this up, it's going to say one moment, please, and authorizing DEF. Please remove nozzle. All right. Now, of course, got to pop that back on. Let's see if this will even reach. These things are a pain in the butt. First of all, it smells bad. And see all these white crystals? Yeah, any spillage will dry into white crystals. Doesn't look good. And it's in this rolled up thing here. So you gotta really pull it really tough. And it will always try and retract back out or retract back in. So, and come on. All right, we are at the end. And not gonna work. <laughs> See? Alright, so uh hang tight for a minute. I'm gonna have to pull the truck for uh back. And uh yeah, I'll be back. 
All right, I finished pulling back and we are now pretty much lined up right here. Now this hose will sometimes retract on you, so you really gotta be careful. Kind of keep an eye on it. Sometimes it just will not stay. Oh, let's uh, not forget, we gotta push the DEF button for it to register. All right, now we're good. That's another thing they do. They don't like to stay on either. Come on. I gotta just hold it halfway down if I do it too much. Oh, there it goes. Now it's staying. And of course. There we go. Now it's staying. And it stopped. These things, these pumps, and they're all the same. They're exactly the same at all stations. You know, whoever manufactures these pumps, they've got, uh, they've got the, the market. There you go, there's that hose, see? It just retracted on its own. If I wasn't holding this here, it would have just spilled all this stuff everywhere, probably gotten all over me and everything. Usually what I do, I pull this out. Ah, come on. And I step on it. Not enough to, you know, make it stop. Not enough to, to squeeze it out, but, you know, there we go. Alright, we, we got five. It might be full. These things don't top off very well. Yeah, I think it's full, so. Uh, it's hard to tell. You, you know, it's such a, a tough fit right there. So some issues that uh, happen with it is it, it'll keep clicking off sometimes. Uh, other times it'll just go really, 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 really slow. Um, and sometimes you get lucky and it works just fine. That's getting really lucky though. All right, here we go. Let's go ahead and retract this hose. Right, this stuff freezes up a little easier, which is why it's in this protection and in high freeze areas it'll actually have insulation all around it as well because it freezes up a lot easier than the uh than the diesel does all right now remove nozzle we've got to fill up the reefer how do we do that well this sure is not going to reach all the way back there we always have to move the truck up so let me go ahead and get the truck moved up i'll be back all right we have moved up And it'll take a few uh, times of practice to kind of get, you know, know where this is uh, lined, you know, to get it lined up to the, uh, the fuel island. Because you cannot see this in the mirror or from your, uh, you know, from your perspective. So you got to kind of know where it's at <laughs> and uh, do your best. Now, they put these up really high and you can see not really made very well for this. So you got to really kind of Jimmy it in sometimes, sometimes it's easier, sometimes it's not. That one was not too bad. All right. And let's go. There we go. All right, we're filling that up. Now, here's something you really have to watch out for. If you are parked too far that way, okay, and the hose is coming across this, and sometimes the DEF and this are reversed, which I prefer, but now the hose interacts with this. Sometimes just doing it just barely the wrong way, and the hose will knock this thing down, and boom, shuts it off, and you're done. Whether that's fueling diesel, it, you know, if you're fueling the diesel, then it's gonna think, okay, well, you're finished fueling diesel, it's time to, to start with your DEF, you gotta cancel the whole thing and start over. Uh, or if you're doing reefer like this, you basically have to cancel, you know, it, it thinks you're done. And so you have to start the process over and, you know, get more uh, reefer fuel. Royal pain in the butt. All right, these things always shut off early. You always have to come out here and really top these things off. Start seeing it 
come out a little bit. You, the goal is to click it off like that before you overfill it and it spills everywhere. So you do not want to be making a mess out of these fuel islands. There we go. Look at that. Perfect. Perfect. Let's go ahead and uh, remove that. Before I forget, let's go ahead and put this back on, shall we? These things, as you can see, they're threaded. You screw them on. There we go. And we are done. We have just fueled. Now, it is very important. Let me get away from the reefer here. It's very important that if you are done fueling, okay, and you have other business to do, whether it's other business to do in the truck or heading on inside, anything like that, you do not just want to sit here because there's other people that could be waiting. You always want to pull up like this truck did right here. You pull up, you get out of the way. Now, I, I wouldn't be sitting here talking about it if there was somebody behind me. <laughs> but uh, you get out of the way and let the next person go. And you don't stay there for very long. Don't take your 30 minute break there unless the place is completely empty and there's plenty of spots. You do what you need to do inside, use the restroom, grab a snack, and get the heck out of there and make room for other people. That's common courtesy, that's trucker courtesy for everybody. That's what we do, all right? So, now I'm gonna be bringing you the, uh, the video showing you guys how to do it the easy way, which is at the fuel, you know, the, uh, the, the terminals, I'm sorry for any time incongruencies or uh, anything that I may have repeated because I shot that video already thinking that was going to be the only one. But there are so many different things out here that I really wanted to show you like the fuel islands and all that stuff that I just couldn't get at the terminal. So hope you enjoyed the two different perspectives. Make sure you comment and let me know. All right, see you in Pittston Terminal. From Pittston, Pennsylvania, I am at the Prime Terminal. And I am in outbound right now. Getting ready to fuel up, and DJ is going to help here. Uh, so we've gotten a lot of uh, requests to add to my truck stop series about fueling a Peterbilt. You already saw that I fueled the uh, the Freightliner at one point, but fueling a Peterbilt is a little bit different. So, DJ, say hi to the camera. How you doing? <laughs> right on. And uh, here we go. We're going to go ahead and get this thing filled up. Now he's starting with the DEF, the diesel exhaust fluid. There we go, he's got that running. Hey, just pump it from these big old tanks right here. There we go, done with the DEF. He's heading around to the other side for this test. There you go. Pop that thing open. Start her up. Piece of kick. The positive side is you can set the pump in there and it stays. With the Freightliners, although I never experienced the issue, the Freightliner, since it is more at a sideways angle, it had a tendency to sometimes fall out, depending on how the nozzle was. Uh, I never had that issue, but a lot of drivers would carry a bungee cord, strap it right there, and they would basically bungee it to make sure that uh, that it did not fall out. If it falls out, you're spilling fuel, AKA money, everywhere. All right, so that is basically it. Once he gets those things filled up, there we go. There we go, he's topping them off now. It's another thing you'll definitely want to do. It will uh, shut off on you uh, when, uh, when it gets uh, near full. You just have to pull the nozzle out just a little bit. As you can see. And let it keep going. And of course when it's all done, all you got to do is put the cap back on, secure it, and that is it. Piece of cake. All right, everybody, that is, that's it. Nice, short, quick little video on how to fuel the, the uh, Peterbilt. There it goes. That one just shut off. And 
If you have any follow-up questions, feel free to leave a comment. I try and get to and answer all of my comments. All right, and uh, let's say thank you to DJ here. DJ, thank you very much for uh, for showing us how to fuel. No Take care. All right, everybody, you know what to do. Uh, check out my other videos, especially my truck stop series. If you haven't seen them, they're going to be right about there. Yes, right there. Click on it. That's my truck stop series. Uh, take a look at the different truck stops and how to fuel a Freightliner. And other than that, click on my face. Talk to you later.